Today we're gonna to build this awesome mailbox. Welcome to my workshop. Let's dive into some of the materials and tools you'll need to complete this mailbox. It's actually very simple. Of course, you'll need your actual mailbox. I'm going with this little flat one here, which I'll have a link down in the description below. And then two inch screws that are for exterior purposes and some of your numbers if you want your address on your little mailbox. As for the wood, you'll need three fence posts made of cedar and preferably a two by four that's cedar. There's just no cedar two by fours in my area right now. Um, so this is pressure treated, which will look almost the same once it's stained and sealed. Now here's the deal. I'm using a cedar fence post here because a cedar piece of one by three will cost you $10 for one. I'm able to rip this into two one by three boards and this cost me only $3.50. I'd rather spend $3.50 than $20 and I'm doing that three more times. So $60 versus $10. I'm gonna go this route. But if you don't have a way to rip your wood, you might have to go and buy a one by three. You're still gonna have an awesome product. You obviously don't want this section on your piece, so I'm going to measure the entire board into this point here for my usable space. My workable space here is about 71 inches, so I divided that into three sections, which leaves me with about 23 inch uh, cuts. So that's what I'm gonna go with here. And I place my mailbox here within that 23 inch span, and it looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go with that. You can divide this into four and use more, you get more out of your wood, I guess but then you kind of have too narrow to me a mailbox area. So we're gonna go 23 inches. Now this bad boy here is for the two legs on this thing and I'm just gonna cut it directly in half and leave the legs as long as they're gonna be, which in this case are five feet long. And if I need to cut more off later, then so be it. I will be putting this in the mountains and it's gonna be rocky where I'm digging. I'm not sure far, how far down I can go, but we'll make it work. I'm just gonna start with making one cut for now and then use this section as a template for my next cuts. Oh, and plug in your tools before you use them. So actually I kind of like it like this. I have to think about it more, but instead of ripping these in half and making them smaller planks, this looks kind of cool. Smaller planks would probably be a little bit more modern, but this is for a cabin. And I think this might just work and save me a lot of time and hassle from using my broken table saw in there. The other thing is if you do do smaller planks, <laughs> do do, if you do use, do do use, smaller planks, you have more gaps. And that means you can space these out even further and use more or use less wood, but it fills up the same portion. I do already have a leftover plank, so I don't really need that either. These legs are gonna go in pretty far. I think this might work. The other thing, in case you tune out of this video right away, is these boards are actually gonna go on their side, the legs. They're not gonna be flat like this. They're gonna be on their side. Just makes this a little bit more sturdy. I've lined up the top on the sides. You can see they're perfectly flush and flush to the top. And then I have this straightened out because this is also flush with the sides, flush with the bottom, flush with this other side here. This plank obviously will not stay here because these are my legs, but I just know that these two boards are straight all the way down and I'll just keep straightening it as I add more, more planks. So I'm gonna start here though. Since all of the screws will be clearly visible from the road, I am going to mark precisely where the screw holes go ahead of time. And then I'm gonna pre-drill. You're gonna see the next steps. But yes, I would recommend measuring and making sure your screw lines are completely straight going all the way down. Otherwise it could look kind of funky. 
imagine like a deck. You're walking on a deck and you just see screws kind of waving through it. Uh, we're gonna make sure this looks clean. Federally speaking, the mailbox has to be 41 to 45 inches high, and that's from the point of entry of where you deliver the mail. Think about the driver, he has to, he only has his window, right? The height of his vehicle to be able to put mail in. So 41 to 45 inches, I'm gonna measure from where I believe the ground will end up being and try to get this in between there. And that wraps up the simple mailbox. It's actually cheaper than just buying one of those standard posts that you see everywhere. I mean, these are just fence posts and a couple of two by fours. The wood here only costs $25, so just grab some numbers, grab a mailbox, some stain, and you're good to go. Luckily, I only have three numbers on this mailbox. The other cedar mailbox I'm building has five letters. Links to all these products will be down in the description below, along with the actual build dimensions. Every house that I've ever sold has had one of these mailboxes made by me. Not this exact kind, but this one, along with the other mailbox I'll have in a different video. And they've all sold way above asking price. Now, whether that's the market or my lucky charms here, that's to be determined. But even this house right behind me, which I'm creepily standing in front of, I no longer own. I actually sold it last year or just a few months ago. I miss you, Fox Creep. This is the Twin Creeks cabin I was remodeling all what, two years ago. I have a whole playlist on it on my channel. Guys, thanks for watching. Subscribe for more content just like this, and I'll see you all on the next one. I should have shot that whole outro standing up. It looks way better instead of me like, hey, look at this little thing. All right, that's too much, that's too much.